chapter 11. Now when Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the seed royal. But Ye Yehoshaphat, the daughter of King Yoram, sister of Ahaziah, took Yoash, the son of Ahaziah, and stole him away from among the king's sons that were slain even him and his nurse, and put them in the bedchamber, and they hid him from Athaliah, so that he was not slain. And he was with her, hid in the house of the Lord six years, and Athaliah reigned over the land. And in the seventh year Jehoiada sent and fetched the captains over hundreds of the Karites and, the, and of the guard, and brought them to him into the house of the Lord. And he made a covenant with them, and took an oath of them in the house of the Lord, and showed them the king's son. And he commanded them, saying, This is the thing that you shall do, a third part of you that cometh in on the Sabbath, and that keep the watch of the king's house. Now another third part was at the gate, uh, sir, and another third part at the gate behind the guard, shall keep the watch of the house, and be a barrier. And the other two parts of you, even all that go forth on the Sabbath, shall keep the watch of the house of the Lord about the king. And you shall compass the king around about, every man with his weapons in his hand. And he that cometh within the ranks, let him be slain, and be you with the king when he goes out and when he comes in. And the captains over hundreds did according to all that Jehoiada the priest commanded. And they took every man his his men, those that were to come in on the Sabbath, with those that were to go out on the Sabbath, and came to Jehoiada the priest. And the priest delivered to the captains over hundreds the spear and the shields that had been King David's, which were in the house of the Lord. And the guard stood, every man with his weapon in his hand, from the right side of the house to the left side of the house, along by the altar and the house, by the king round about. Then he brought out the king's son, and put upon him the crown, and the insignia, and they made him king, and anointed him, and they clapped their hands, and said, Long live the king. And when Athaliah heard the noise of the guard, and of the people, she came to the people in the house of the Lord. And she looked, and behold, the king stood on the platform as the manor was, and the captains and the trumpets by the king. And all the people of the land rejoiced, and blew with the trumpets. The, then Athaliah rent her clothes, and cried, Treason! Treason! And Jehoiada the priest commanded the captains of hundreds, the officers of the host, and said unto them, Have her forth between the ranks, and him that followeth her slay with the sword, for the priest said, Let her not be slain in the house of the Lord. So they made way for her, and she went by the way of the horse's entry to the king's house, and there was she slain. And Jehoiada made a covenant between the Lord and the king and the people that they should be the Lord's people between the king also and the people. And all the people of the land went to the houses of Baal and broke it down. His altar and his images broke they in pieces thoroughly and slew Matan, the priest of Baal, before the altars. And the priest appointed officers over the house of the Lord. And he took the captains over hundreds and the carrites and the guard and all the people of the land. And they brought down the king from the house of the Lord and came by the way of the gate of the guard unto the king's house. And he sat on the throne of the kings. So all the people of the land rejoiced and the city was quiet. And they slew Athaliah with the sword at the king's house. All right, let's go back up to verse 1. Now, yesterday, we remember Yahu has come in and he has brought this great judgment from God on Israel and Judah. And he had slain Ahaziah and Yoram in the battle there by Yezreel. Well, this is, we're picking up now during that same time frame. This is just after that has happened. Verse 1. Now when Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the seed royal. And we remember Athaliah, she was the daughter of Omri, the student of God. And Ahaziah, uh, 
And Athaliah means those afflicted of God. Those, these are those in the wine press, those that are pressed down by God. And she destroys now all the king's sons and all his children. This would be her grandchildren. But Jehoshaphat, the daughter of the king, King Yoram, sister of Ahaziah, took Joash, the son of Ahaziah, and stole him away from among the king's sons that were slain, even him and his nurse, and put them in the bedchamber, and they hid him from Athaliah, so that he was not slain. So now, Yehoshua, this is God has sworn, God has took this oath, God has done this, he's going to bring this about, She's the daughter of Yoram. Now, God, Yah is exalted. And we remember Yoram, him, he was just slain by Yahu. And she's the sister of Ahaziah. And she's took Yoash. Yoash means God's fire. And he's the son of Ahaziah. And she stole him away so that he didn't get killed by Athaliah. In other words, she's, he, she has took him and his nurse and hid them. And they've been spared, three. And he was with her, hid in the house of the Lord for six years. And Athaliah reigned over the land. So we'll see now that she has took him, and they've hid out in the house of God, in the temple there. And for six years did they hide there. Six is the work of man. This is that period of time where man is caused to toil, even in this understanding, these circles that go around. Meanwhile, while he's hiding there, Athaliah, those that are pressed down by God, these that God, once again, is using as a judgment, she's going to reign over the land. And she, and, and like I've said before, God has did never make a way now, it's not in the law, that a woman should reign over Israel in any way. It's because of the, the symbology of what woman means and what it represents to God. For and in the seventh year, Jehoiada sent and fetched the captains over hundreds of the carrites and of the guard, and brought them into them to him into the house of the Lord, and made a covenant with them, and took an oath of them in the house of the Lord, and showed them the king's son. So now, seven years later, after Athaliah sl has slew all the seed royal, and they've hid Joash, Jehoiada calls all the captain of the guards and all these others together, these Cotterites, and these Cotterites are those of the fat seat, and basically all that is, is these important people of the city, and these important people, and we'll talk where we're at, we're in Jerusalem, is where this is all taking place. And he's called them together, and he's, he's made them make an agreement, and he's what he does is he brings out the king's son and shows him there is... Here's the king's son. This is the royal seed, which God has said should reign over Israel, or should reign over Judah. And they brought Joash out, this fire of God, this flame of God. And he showed them to the guard now. Five, and he commanded them, saying, This is the thing that you shall do. A third part of you that come in on the Sabbath, and that keep the watch of the king's house. So he's talking to those that are already there on the Sabbath because it was customary that every Sabbath the guard would change and that's what we'll be talking about is here during this changing of the guard and down at the end of this verse this verse would have added to it now the end of the next verse and we're going to read it like that instead of reading the beginning of verse 6 we're going to skip down here to the end where it says shall and we're going to read verse 5 see because it says, That cometh in on the Sabbath, and keep the watch of the king's house, shall keep the watch of the house, and be a barrier. So, and that's what Jehoiada is telling them. These that are here on the Sabbath, now you're going to stay, and keep the house, and keep a watch over this place, and be a barrier. Be Set up a, a line to, of guard. Six. Now, another third part was at the gate of Sir, and another part at the gate behind the guard. And this is where the other two-thirds of the guard were. One-third was already in the house as the guard of this that was there till the next Sabbath. And another third part was at the gate of Sir. 
And sir means this gate of turning away. And a gate represents that place of decision, a, the place of entry or departure. This place of decision, which is where all the elders used to gather together and make all the decisions. And we'll notice that it's divided into three. This three means complete, of, and this is the division of it. And the other part, and the other part was at the gate behind the guard. And this gate behind the guard is this this place. It's a, a, a different entry. It's a shortcut now down to the city of David. And the other two, seven, and the other two parts of you, even all that go forth on the Sabbath, shall keep the watch of the house of the Lord about the king. So what he's telling of the captains now over these hundreds, the captains over these judgments, he's telling them now, you all of you, nobody's going nowhere this Sabbath. No, everybody's going to stay right here. These, they are keeping the guard. They're going to keep the watch now. And the other two of you are going to come in here. And we're going to make this. What they're going to do is protect the king. Now they're going to anoint him. Eight. And you shall come surround the king round about, every man with his weapons in his hand. And he that goeth cometh within the ranks, let him be slain. And be you with the king when he goeth out and when he comes in. So, Jehoiada, God knows, God understands these things. He's the priest. And he's commanded now, these captains of the guards, to watch over the king when he comes in and when he goes out. He's appointed them now and officiate him for this reason. Nine, and the captains over the hundreds did according to all that Jehoiada the priest commanded. And they took every man his, his men, those that were to come in on the Sabbath, and with those that were to go out on the Sabbath, and come to Jehoiada the priest. So now these captains of hundreds, and these are the captains, these are that are over the judgment, come, they, they have made this agreement with Jehoiada, God's understanding, and they're going to do this thing, and they're going to keep charge now over the king and watch out for him when he comes in and when he goes out. And the priest tent, and the priest delivered to the captains over hundreds the spear and the shields that had been King David's, which were in the house of the Lord. And this is where David had brought in these these great shields and spears that he had probably conquered in the battles. And the priests now are going to hand these out, these weapons out. These spears represent that which can be cast forth from the hand. This of, of great truth and these shields will be in representation to the covenant this agreement that's made even this agreement of judgment and the guard stood every man with his weapon in his hand from the right side of the house to the left side of the house along by the altar and the house by the king round about so now the guards come in, everybody's got their weapons, everybody's got their spears and their shields in their hands, and they've come in, and they've surrounded the king, They're, they've all, all the way around the house. Twelve, then he brought out the king's son, and put upon him the crown, and the insignia, and they made him king, and anointed him, king, him, and they clapped their hands, and said, long live the king. So, They've had this inauguration. They've gone and have anointed now. Joash, God's fire, God's flame, to be the king. And they put upon him the crown. And this crown represents the, it's like the cherry on the Sunday. It's the topping. It's the, the epiphany, this, this gold that, which is like a covering now supposed to be of God. And this insignia is not, insignia means some kind of symbol or sign, I would take it. But this is not what we're, he's saying here. What it's saying is this, they give him the, I know the King James Version says testimony. And that's a little bit closer to what it means. But what they did was they, he recited now the, the speech, this thing which is, was promised in the understanding they told him this is the confirmation God said that the king should keep a copy of the law beside him and this is the what they're telling him now they're making sure he understands the duties of the king and that he was supposed to keep the charge that Moses commanded through the law 
Keep a copy of the law, stay in the law, do according to the thing, not multiply himself wives, not multiply himself armies and chariots and horses like all these other kings have done. 13. And when Athaliah heard the noise, and after they anointed him, everybody's clapping their hands and yelling, Long live the king. 13. And when Athaliah heard the noise of the guard and of the people, she came to the people and to the house of the Lord. So Athaliah, she's heard this commotion going on now down at the temple. And she runs down there to where all the people are to see what's going on. 14. And she looked, and behold, the king stood on the platform as the manner was, and the captains and the, and the trumpets by the king, and all the people of the land rejoiced and blew the trumpets. Then Athaliah rent her clothes and cried, Treason, treason. And once again, this treason is conspiracy. Conspiracy. She knows now that this has been going on behind her back the whole time. See? Athaliah those that are pressed down by God, these are the ones that God used for this purpose anyway. They've been in charge now for this period of time. But now the true king's going to be anointed. The true king gets anointed. And to much of her surprise, when she walks in and finds everything set in the correct order, the way it was supposed to be, and Jehoiada the priest commanded the captains of hundreds, the officers of the host, and said unto them, Have her forth between the ranks, and him that followeth her slay with the sword. For the priest said, Let her not be slain in the house of the Lord. And we would not want none of her blood shed there. We would defile the house of God. This was what the priest commanded. So, And what he said was, Make a way, get her out of here. Take her forth between the ranks, make a hole. Split the, split the line in half so we get her out of here. And they took her straight out the door there. And he told them, anybody that's following her, slay them with the sword. And this sword is always going to be the word of God, this truth. 16, so they made way for her. And she went out by the way of the horse's entry to the king's house. And there was she slain. So they did just what Jehoiada said. They split split the crowd in half and made a way for the door. And they took her straight out and took her down and brought her in by the horse's entry to the king's house. And this horse's entry is just that, where they would bring the horses in and these, the chariots and the carriages and all these things, and they would lead right there to the stalls and stuff where they would bring the horses in. And these horses represent strength, these strengths that they have. 17, and Jehoiada made a covenant between the Lord and the king and the people that they should be the Lord's people between the king also and the people. So now Jehoiada, God knows, God understands. God knows the, the, the trouble you've had. God understands these, these teachings that men have brought you under. and He understands all this thing, but he, he makes a covenant now with them again, that they should be the Lord's people, God's people, and do according to the law and according to God's word. 18. And all the people of the land went to the house of Baal and broke it down, and his altars and his images broke they in pieces thoroughly, and slew Matan, the priest of Baal, before the altars. And the priest appointed officers over the house of the Lord. So we see this great restoration now that we was talking about how God has caused to restore. God has seen that it's got out of hand beyond that which man can do, beyond what we can fix, beyond what we have the capability to do. So that God understands this and God knows. He's made an example out of this. God's caused all this to happen. We've got to understand that. And we'll see now the people have gone out as soon as they've been made this agreement, they've come under this understanding, and, and they're welcoming it. They go out and they tear down Baal's altars. They break them down. And, and his images break them in pieces thoroughly. So they break them up so you can't put it back together. Baal, these, this Lord they've made, this images they've made over themselves, 
And they, they've slain Matan, the priest of Baal. This one who, uh, priest of Baal, priest of nothing's what he is. Matan, he's the gift. See, he's the gift. He's the priest of Baal. And the priests have appointed officers over the house of God. So they've destroyed now the house of Baal and all his images and his priest. They broke down his altars. Sounds kind of like what that one prophet told Jeroboam when he walked in there. He told him he's going to bust these altars in half. There will be a son born in Joash by name. Maybe. 19. And he took the captains over hundreds and the Cotterites and the garden and all the people of the land. And they brought down the king from the house of the Lord and came by the way of the gate of the garden to the king's house. And he sat on the throne of the king's. So now Jehoiada and all the captains, these that were over the judgments, and the Carterites, those are the fat seat, these that are in charge of everything, these that have made their little fat seat up there. They bring down the king the house out of the house of they bring down the king out of the house of God. And they bring him down by the way of the gate of the garden. And this the little gate of the garden was a special little gate, see. It went straight from the house of God. By a way, straight to the, where the throne of the king would sit now in the king's house. And it was the way he would send the messengers now. If he had a message to send to the priest, he would send them by the gate of the guard. And they would go this shortcut now and by this way. And it was a narrow passage. 20. So all the people of the land rejoiced. And the city was quiet. And they slew Athaliah with the sword at the king's house. So we're going to see they everything quietens down after this. God is bringing a little peace into the land. A little city's quiet and all the people are happy now. The king's back up here on his throne. They've made him king. They've got him a king again. And they've slain Athaliah, those that were afflicted by God, those that were pressed down, those of the wine press so to speak of God she was the daughter of Omri Omri is this pupil of God this student he's been trying to teach this lesson to all along alright let's move to chapter 12